Hey, what's up, guys? The last video of this great, great book, uh, but it's one I haven't looked forward to because it's a really, it, it, for me, it's it's a little, it's a really heart wrenching story, and it has been a heart wrenching story for a lot of people. Barefoot giant. Now, uh, probably some of you who are younger probably saw Grave of the Fireflies. I uh, know how depressing that is. This is from. 1973. Uh, this is essentially autobiographical. The story covers more. They call it, it covers the aftermath of the atomic bombing as well. Uh, and this character is basically him. You see the horror of the bomb. You see the lingering effects of it. You see oh, other things that you see in other film, like in Japanese films, like Battles Without Art and Humanity. You see Hiroshima, uh, the Yakuza really find a stronghold there. Uh, a devastated place that needs a black market and uh, plenty of war orphans who are pretty hardened by life, making good soldiers for them. Of course, the Americans, always Americans. Uh, uh, autobiographical. He, I read an interview with him years ago. He, it pretty much, with some differences, he pretty much went through this. Uh, and he covers a lot of things here too, right? The plight of the Korean minority, just like Masaki Kobayashi. If you ever see his films, there's always a Korean character in it who's always in an interesting position, either as a criminal or an idealistic, uh, idealistic communist. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the, it's interesting because what this kid, what this character and the story goes through is so horrific. Obviously, many people went through this, you know, in uh, Germany. Uh, Japan, even Italy, I suppose Russia, uh, but it just gets worse and worse. But when you read the story, there's a, there's it's hard to describe. It could very much be a victimhood thing, and you don't get that. If anything, you get a very right fierce spirit, right? indomitable. You see that the uh, the character's father even tells him uh, at one point, you know, to to be a man, to be strong, you know. Even through all this, no matter what happens, you go on. Ah, uh, very interesting. Like I said, you know, it, it's you know, uh, easily what you see when something like this happens is you have victimhood uh, uh, pushed, but you don't you don't have that. You have stoicism. You have, uh, like I said, indomitable spirit, while still pointing out what a horrible thing uh, this was. Okay, of course, the the atomic bombing of Japan. Uh, people talk about was it necessary was it this I mean these are all moot points the fire bombings as I've gone over were horrific enough the Japanese wanted to surrender um, and these things were done for uh, right future uh, uh, looking towards you know dealing with the Soviets but then again you know Truman like can you imagine if you uh, you hadn't used these weapons and let's say the war did go on and then it was found out that he had these weapons and didn't use them. Well, it didn't matter. He was his political career was toast after Korea, right? Five years later. But I'm going all over this history just for you know, a different reason. This was probably the first manga ever translated into English right, in the '70s, right? Of course, with the project, a peace uh, project, Gen, right? Uh, you know, for a peace mission, international thing. Of course, the atomic bombings, like I said, the fire bombings. Were, were more wide scale, but the atomic bombing, of course, has a political relevancy, uh, you know, the dawning of the atomic age, but also the threat that nuclear weapons posed uh, to the future. Now, other people argue that uh, nuclear weapons prevented another major war, but, you know, that, that argument, although true, uh, you just had all these proxy wars. That doesn't make a difference anyway, because war is not really the thing that's doing us in. Uh, in our modern societies, is it? Anyway, I just uh, American readers sometimes complain the effects of the bomb are depicted too graphically. Now you've seen the photos, okay? Of uh, you know, I mean, you've seen the photos, like I said, from the fire bombings as well. But you've seen the photos from there. Right? Of course, you had the radiation sickness, uh, which was you could say not known of. Who the hell knows what they knew? But let's let's go through this. Right, it was a Monday. Man, I don't like Mondays. And you see his style. It's like, yeah, you know, it's Jen's a cool his little brother. Uh, 
you know, obviously the war is going on now. I, Hiroshima, I don't believe, you think I would know. Hiroshima, I, I believe, was not ever firebombed, unlike Osaka, Kobe, Tokyo, all these other places. Um, but obviously the war is going on. Uh, they're starving. They see a B-29. Oh. Well, you sell the, no, they used to see them all the time. Uh, now, this is edited. The story's a lot longer, but you see, right, the atomic bomb, right? And, you know, it's, yeah, right. It was exploded over the city. Right? It didn't hit the ground and go clink. It was, it was detonated. And you just see, you know. Now, the movie, of course, is very, very graphic, right? Like a wind from hell, the atomic cloud roared up six miles into the sky or Hiroshima. Yeah, actually looking very similar to Ground Zero on nine, uh, the day after 9-11 when I drove down there and saw the same thing going up in the sky, of course. Nowhere near the body count. Right? And you see like people melted. You know, and you see, like, people are still alive. They look like monsters. Yeah. My throat is burning. Please, my water. He said, I'll get some. He's trying to be a good, a good kid, a good man, a good boy. And you just see right now, obviously, the atomic uh, the bomb was an explosion, but it caused a lot of fires. The horse is on fire. Of course, you... So that mentioned in the Goodrich book. <sighs> uh, mommy, I can't see, right? Uh, she's been she's blind, blinded by the glass, and people with glass all of them and then uh, and you now the fire. Now this this is really rough. In the animated version of this, and in this, this, this really, this bothered me a lot. Now you're going, wow, you're a wussy in these goings down. You know, you know, too, too friggin' bad. Okay, he finds where his, the house is. The mother is pregnant, also, and the the sister, the brother, and the father are trapped under. The roof has collapsed. It hurts. It hurts. And they're trying. He's trying to get them out. He's trying to get them out. They're, they're trapped. They're still alive, but they can't get out. Right? Right? Get me out. Uh, you know. And then the fire is spreading. Right? This. This is. Uh, you know. There's nothing they could do. Right? Now, of course, in the movie, remember the father tells him, like, take them and leave. Right? You know, and you hear the brother crying through the fire, crying, crying, get me out, get me out. Uh, now, this is just a comic, right? But this actually happened to you know, Kiji Nakazawa. And in this case, the, the father and the son, he actually was, his legs were sticking out and he, was, he couldn't get out and he was screaming to the fire. The mother uh, was dragged away by a neighbor in reality and she went temporarily mad. As you remember, right, she goes crazy. Uh, temporarily at at this, right? It was, it was horrible. It was hard. It's just uh, obviously this happened in God knows how many times in Germany, my mother's people's homeland. Of course, Japan has happened with the fire bombings as well. All this, right? And yeah, it happened in London too, you know? and in Russia. And in uh, North Korea, where the Americans bombed the shit out of them. But anyway, so now of course this is edited. You know, right, the sister, right? The mother was pregnant, and they give birth to the sister. I'm your big brother. You better listen to me. Hurry up and grow up. We can play together. Papa, easy shinko, and you see all the people wandering around like zombies. Look, she's healthy. She's gonna be beautiful when she grows up. And he's like, you'll never know her, right? Yeah. This is what your father, brother, and sister this what took them from us. This is war. Yeah. 
Now, if you rem- uh, I'm sorry, I was a little. It's so horrible, man. The way I mean, just and it, of course, this is the, this is what he's trying. He went through this. He's trying to show this right, to you how horrible it is to die so horribly, knowing you're going to burn and you can't. You're trapped, just like all those people in the fire bombing video who got trapped and wedged together and couldn't move as the fire, you know, the fire moved to consume them and they couldn't get out. You know, uh, of the uh, you know being all put together in the crowd, and they couldn't move, and they couldn't escape, and they knew what their death was gonna be. Uh, and if you remember the movie too, he comes back, and he, which is what K.G. Nakazawa did in real life, he went back and he took the skulls of his dead father, sister, and brother, and collected them. All right, I know you're like, oh man, dude, don't. Oh. Hey, unsubscribe. I don't want to get a thousand subscribers. <laughs> unsubscribe to me, so I, I, I'm a I'm a wussy. No, this is pretty horrible. All seriousness aside, it, it only gets worse though. If people who know this, you know, uh, spoiler, you know that this baby dies. Okay, from malnutrition. Ah, uh, you and other things happen, and this kid, this poor kid, but he never. He never gives up. He keeps, you know, he finds another, you know, he finds a, a kid that looks like his brother and becomes his new little brother. And, tries, and he takes care, you know, he takes care of his mother. Grows up to be a delinquent. Grows up to be an artist. Right? It's autobiographical. Uh, becomes a bit of a hothead, you know. And this comic ran for a while. If you look at how many volumes there are, there's probably like nine, I think 11 volumes, and they're like 300 pages each. So this goes on well into... The new Japan that comes out of this, but um, yeah, you know, I said, and the, the animated movie. I think it's on YouTube. You, you see it. You see when the, the effects of the bombs hitting. It. It's just, you know, uh, oh, you're so fascinated with military stuff. I am. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean I like the wars. I mean, the whole gist of everything is when all is said and done. Everything we're going through. All the horror that we're going through slowly, not on this level, but on a maybe even worse level in the long run, is because of what happened in this war. Japan is not immune if you see what's happening. You know, even lacking certain elements here that we have, there's something. Uh, of course, this is from years ago, but there's something going on. I was talking to Arkham Reporter. It's like there's something off, and you're going, no, duh, but there's something more on a higher level that's off pretty much it's just the modern civilization is starting to die okay uh, and this is where it uh, this is where it became apparent this fucking war like I said you, you're still paying the price we're all still paying the price for it uh, is it you know in terms of guilt or whatever someone made a good point uh, no, actually, it was from someone made a good point. It was Nakazawa made a good point about how Americans are so easy to, yeah, let's go bomb, let's go bomb Iran, let's go bomb this and that. They've, uh, uh, last time Americans got bombed and destroyed, it was Southerners, you know, in, in Atlanta and Charleston being uh, blasted and and um, hit it with barrages, killing people, uh, their cities being burned down. That was 150 years ago. Since then, Americans haven't really experienced that other than, of course, 9-11, which, uh, as horrible as it was, it was just a taste, a little little taste of Dresden or Tokyo or Hiroshima. Of course, I keep saying there's not so much Nagasaki stuff. I don't know why. Nagasaki doesn't seem to roll off the lips, like I said, but Nagasaki is also a very Catholic part of uh, Japan, right? Anyway, oh look, and it, to round it out, I didn't I realize this, right? Oh, Stan Lee. I like I like Stan Lee, man. I Stan Lee's cool. I like Stan Lee, and I didn't realize he wrote something here, Excelsior, right? He wrote the uh, little I don't know what you would call this. I guess an outro, but that's interesting. What a great book, man. Now, of course, uh, the manga of today, for the most part, uh, is not as good as these. With some uh, exceptions, but you know, like I said, there's only so much ca- cultural capital that you have, even amongst the Japanese. Uh, always the war, right? but uh, our war isn't over. 
Not by a long shot. All right. Enjoy the comics, kids. <laughs> Later.